Chapters 21 through 24 of the Gospel according to Luke. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more info, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to Luke, from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 21 through 24. Chapter 21 Looking up, he saw the people throwing their gifts into the treasury, the rich people. He also saw a poor widow dropping in two farthings, and he said, In truth I tell you that this widow, so poor, has thrown in more than any of them. For from what they could well spare, they have all of them contributed to the offerings. But she in her need has thrown in all she had to live on. When some were remarking about the temple, how it was embellished with beautiful stones and dedicated gifts, he said, As to these things which you now admire, the time is coming when there will not be one stone left here upon another which will not be pulled down. Rabbi, when will this be? they asked him. And what will be the token given when these things are about to take place? See to it, he replied, that you are not misled, for many will come assuming my name and professing, I am he, or saying, the time is close at hand. Do not go and follow them. But when you hear of wars and turmoils, be not afraid, for these things must happen first, but the end does not come immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise in arms against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes, and in places famines and pestilence, and there will be terrible sights and wonderful tokens from heaven. But before all these things happen, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. They will deliver you up to synagogues and to prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my sake. In the end, all of this will be evidence of your fidelity. Make up your minds, however, not to prepare a defense beforehand, for I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to withstand or reply to. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives, friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be the objects of universal hatred because you are called by my name, and yet not a hair of your heads shall perish. By your patient endurance you will purchase your lives. But when you see Jerusalem with armies encamping round her on every side, then be certain that her overthrow is close at hand. Then let those who shall be in Judea escape to the hills. Let those who are in the city leave it, and those who are in the country not enter in. For those are the days of vengeance and of fulfilling all that is written. Alas for the women who at that time are with child or who have infants, For there will be great distress in the land, and anger towards this people. They will fall by the sword, or be carried off into slavery among all the Gentiles. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles, till the appointed times of the Gentiles have expired. There will be signs in sun, moon, and stars, and on earth anguish among the nations in their bewilderment at the roaring of the sea and its billows while men's hearts are fainting for fear, and for anxious expectation of what is coming on the world. For the forces which control the heavens will be disordered and disturbed, and then will they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and glory. But when all this is beginning to take place, grieve no longer. Lift up your heads, because your deliverance is drawing near. And he spoke a parable to them. See, he said, the fig tree and all the trees, as soon as they have shot out their leaves, you know at a glance that summer is now near. So also, when you see these things happening, you may be sure that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you in solemn truth that the present generation will certainly not pass away without all these things having first taken place. Earth and sky will pass away, but it is certain that my words will not pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your souls be weighed down with self-indulgence and drunkenness or the anxieties of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a falling trap. 
for it will come on all dwellers on the face of the whole earth. But beware of slumbering, and every moment pray that you may be fully strengthened to escape from all these coming evils, and to take your stand in the presence of the Son of Man. His habit at this time was to teach in the temple by day, but to go out and spend the night on the mount called the Olive Yard. And all the people came to him in the temple, early in the morning, to listen to him. Chapter 22 Meanwhile the festival of the unleavened bread, called the Passover, was approaching, and the high priests and the scribes were contriving how to destroy him, but they feared the people. Satan, however, entered into Judas, the man called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went and conferred with the high priests and commanders as to how he should deliver him up to them. This gave them great pleasure, and they agreed to pay him. He accepted their offer, and then looked out for an opportunity to betray him when the people were not there. When the day of the unleavened bread came, the day for the Passover lamb to be sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John with instructions. Go, he said, and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. Where shall we prepare it? they asked. You will no sooner have entered the city, he replied, than you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house to which he goes, and say to the master of the house, The rabbi asks you, Where is the room where I can eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished room upstairs. There make your preparations. So they went and found all as he had told them, and they got the Passover ready. When the time was come, and he had taken his place at table, and the apostles with him, he said to them, Earnestly have I longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you that I certainly shall not eat one again till its full meaning has been brought out in the kingdom of God. Then, having received the cup and given thanks, he said, Take this, and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time I will never drink the produce of the vine till the kingdom of God has come. Then, taking a Passover biscuit, he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is being given on your behalf. This do in remembrance of me. He gave them the cup in like manner when the meal was over. This cup, he said, is the new covenant ratified by my blood which is to be poured out on your behalf. Yet the hand of him who is betraying me is at the table with me, for indeed the Son of Man goes on his way, his predestined way. Yet alas for that man who is betraying him! Thereupon they began to discuss with one another which of them it could possibly be who was about to do this. There arose also a dispute among them which of them should be regarded as greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles are their masters, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. With you it is not so, but let the greatest among you be as the younger, and the leader be like him who serves. For which is the greater, he who sits at table, or he who waits on him? Is it not he who sits at table? but my position among you is that of one who waits on others. You, however, have remained with me amid my trials, and I covenant to give you, as my Father has covenanted to give me, a kingdom, so that you shall eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones as judges over the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, I tell you that Satan has obtained permission to have all of you to sift as wheat is sifted, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and you, when at last you have come back to your true self, must strengthen your brethren. Master, replied Peter, with you I am ready to go both to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, said Jesus, that the crow will not crow today till you have three times denied that you know me. Then he asked them, when I sent you out without purse or bag or shoes, was there anything you needed? No, nothing, they replied. 
But now, said he, let the one who has a purse take it, and he who has a bag must do the same, and let him who has no sword sell his outer garment and buy one. For I tell you that those words of Scripture must yet find their fulfillment in me. And he was reckoned among the lawless, for indeed that saying about me has its accomplishment. Master, here are two swords, they exclaimed. That is enough, he replied. On going out, he proceeded as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. But when he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into temptation. But he himself withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed repeatedly, saying, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup away from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him, while he, an agony of distress having come upon him, prayed all the more with intense earnestness, and his sweat became like clots of blood dropping on the ground. When he rose from his prayer and came to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he said. Stand up and pray that you may not come into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd with Judas, already mentioned as one of the twelve, at their head. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Judas, said Jesus, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Those who were about him, seeing what was likely to happen, asked him, Master, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck a blow at the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Permit me thus far, said Jesus, and he touched the ear and healed it. Then Jesus said to the high priests and commanders of the temple and elders, who had come to arrest him, Have you come out as if to fight with a robber, with swords and cudgels? While day after day I was with you in the temple, you did not lay hands upon me. But to you belongs this hour, and the power of darkness. And they arrested him and led him away, and brought him to the high priest's house, while Peter followed a good way behind. And when they had lighted a fire in the middle of the court, and had seated themselves in a group round it, Peter was sitting among them. When a maidservant saw him sitting by the fire, and looking fixedly at him, she said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, and declared, Woman, I do not know him. Shortly afterwards a man saw him, and said, You too are one of them. No, man, I am not, said Peter. After an interval of about an hour, someone else stoutly maintained, Certainly this fellow also was with him, for in fact he is a Galilean. Man, I don't know what you mean, replied Peter. No sooner had he spoken than a cock crowed. The master turned and looked on Peter, and Peter recollected the master's words, how he had said to him, This very day, before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. And he went out and wept aloud bitterly. Meanwhile, the men who held Jesus in custody repeatedly beat him in cruel sport, or blindfolded him, and then challenged him. Prove to us, they said, that you are a prophet by telling us who it was that struck you. And they said many other insulting things to him. As soon as it was day, the whole body of the elders, both high priests and scribes, assembled. Then he was brought into their Sanhedrin, and they asked him, Are you the Christ? Tell us. If I tell you, he replied, you will certainly not believe. And if I ask you questions, you will certainly not answer. But from this time forward the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of God's omnipotence. Thereupon they cried out with one voice, you then are the Son of God? It is as you say, he answered. I am he. What need have we of further evidence, they said, for we ourselves have heard it from his own lips. 
Chapter 23 Then the whole assembly rose and brought him to Pilate, and began to accuse him. We have found this man, they said, an agitator among our nation, forbidding the payment of tribute to Caesar, and claiming to be himself an anointed king. Then Pilate asked him, You then are the king of the Jews? It is as you say, he replied. Pilate said to the high priests and to the crowd, I can find no crime in this man. But they violently insisted, He stirs up the people, they said, throughout all Judea with his teaching, even from Galilee where he first started to this city. On hearing this, Pilate inquired, Is this man a Galilean? And learning that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, for he too was in Jerusalem at that time. To Herod the sight of Jesus was a great gratification, for, for a long time, he had been wanting to see him, because he had heard so much about him. He hoped also to see some miracle performed by him. So he put a number of questions to him, but Jesus gave him no reply. Meanwhile the high priests and the scribes were standing there and vehemently accusing him. Then, laughing to scorn the claims of Jesus, Herod, and his soldiers with him, made sport of him, dressed him in a gorgeous costume, and sent him back to Pilate. And on that very day Herod and Pilate became friends again, for they had been for some time at enmity. Then calling together the high priests and the rulers and the people, Pilate said, You have brought this man to me on a charge of corrupting the loyalty of the people. But, you see, I have examined him in your presence, and have discovered in the man no ground for the accusations which you bring against him. No, nor does Herod, for he has sent him back to us, and, you see, there is nothing he has done that deserves death. I will therefore give him a light punishment and release him. Then the whole multitude burst out into a shout. Away with this man, they said and release Barabbas to us! Barabbas! Who had been lodged in jail for some time in connection with a riot which had occurred in the city, and for murder. But Pilate once more addressed them, wishing to set Jesus free. They, however, persistently shouted, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he appealed to them, Why, what crime has the man committed? I have discovered in him nothing that deserves death. I will therefore give him a light punishment and release him. But they urgently insisted, demanding with frantic outcries that he should be crucified, and their clamor prevailed. So Pilate gave judgment, yielding to their demand. The man who was lying in prison charged with riot and murder, and for whom they clamored, he set free. But Jesus he gave up to be dealt with as they desired. As soon as they led him away, they laid hold on one Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and on his shoulders they put the cross, for him to carry it behind Jesus. A vast crowd of the people also followed him, and of women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned towards them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children, for a time is coming when they will say, Blessed are the women who never bore children, and the breasts which have never given nourishment. Then will they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they are doing these things in the case of the green tree, what will be done in that of the dry? They brought also two others, criminals, to put them to death with him. When they reached the place called the Skull, there they nailed him to the cross, and the criminals also one at his right hand, and one at his left. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they divided his garments among them, drawing lots for them. And the people stood looking on. The rulers, too, repeatedly uttered their bitter taunts. This fellow, they said, saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's anointed, the chosen one. And the soldiers also made sport of him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Save yourself, then! There was, moreover, a writing over his head. This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals who had been crucified insulted him, saying, 
Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other, answering, reproved him. Do you also not fear God, he said, when you are actually suffering the same punishment? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving due requital for what we have done. But he has done nothing amiss. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. I tell you in solemn truth, replied Jesus, that this very day you shall be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and a darkness came over the whole country till three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun was darkened, and the curtain of the sanctuary was torn down the middle. And Jesus cried out in a loud voice and said, Father, to thy hands I entrust my spirit. And after uttering these words, he yielded up his spirit. The captain, seeing what had happened, gave glory to God, saying, Beyond question, this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had come together to this sight, after seeing all that had occurred, returned to the city, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, and the women who had been his followers after leaving Galilee, continued standing at a distance and looking on. There was a member of the council of the name of Joseph, a kind-hearted and upright man, who came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and was awaiting the coming of the kingdom of God. He had not concurred in the design or action of the council, and now he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then, taking it down, he wrapped it in a linen sheet and laid it in a tomb in the rock, where no one else had yet been put. It was the preparation day, and the Sabbath was near at hand. The women, those who had come with Jesus from Galilee, followed close behind, and saw the tomb, and how his body was placed. Then they returned, and prepared spices and perfumes. On the Sabbath they rested in obedience to the commandment. Chapter 24 And on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing the spices they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled back from the tomb, and on entering they found that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. At this they were in great perplexity, when suddenly there stood by them two men whose raiment flashed like lightning. The women were terrified, but as they stood with their faces bowed to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you search among the dead for him who is living? He is not here. He has come back to life. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, when he told you that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified? and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they reported all this to the eleven, and to all the rest. The women were Mary of Magdala, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and they and the rest of the women related all this to the apostles. But the whole story seemed to them an idle tale. They could not believe the women. Peter, however, rose and ran to the tomb, Stooping and looking in, he saw nothing but the linen cloths, so he went away to his own home, wondering at what had happened. On that same day two of the disciples were walking to Emmaus, a village seven or eight miles from Jerusalem, and were conversing about all these recent events, and, in the midst of their conversation and discussion, Jesus himself came and joined them, though they were prevented from recognizing him. "'What is the subject?' he asked them, on which you are talking so earnestly as you walk. And they stood still, looking full of sorrow. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered, Are you a stranger lodging alone in Jerusalem, that you have known nothing of the things that have lately happened in the city? What things? he asked. The things about Jesus the Nazarene, they said, who was a prophet powerful in work and word before God and all the people and how our high priests and rulers delivered him up to be sentenced to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was about to ransom Israel. Yes, and moreover it was the day before yesterday that these things happened. And besides, some of the women of our company have amazed us. 
they went to the tomb at daybreak, and, finding that his body was not there, they came and declared to us that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Thereupon some of our party went to the tomb and found things just as the women had said, but Jesus himself they did not see. O oh, dull-witted men, he replied, with minds so slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was there not a necessity for the Christ thus to suffer, and then enter into his glory? And, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them the passages in Scripture which refer to himself. When they had come near the village to which they were going, he appeared to be going further, but they pressed him to remain with them. Because, said they, it is getting towards evening, and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. But as soon as he had sat down with them, and had taken the bread, and had blessed and broken it, and was handing it to them, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from them. Were not our hearts, they said to one another, burning within us while he talked to us on the way, and explained the scriptures to us? So they rose, and without an hour's delay returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven and the rest met together, who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Master has come back to life, he has been seen by Simon. Then they related what had happened on the way, and how he had been recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. While they were thus talking, he himself stood in their midst and said, Peace be to you. Startled, and in the utmost alarm, they thought they were looking at a spirit. But he said to them, Why such alarm, and why are there such questionings in your minds? See my hands and my feet, it is my very self. Feel me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see I have. And then he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still could not believe it for joy and were full of astonishment, he asked them, have you any food here? And they gave him a piece of roasted fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you, that everything must be fulfilled that is written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise again from among the dead, and that proclamation would be made in his name of repentance and forgiveness of sins to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses as to these things, and remember that I am about to send out my Father's promised gift to rest upon you. But as for you, wait patiently in the city until you are clothed with power from on high." and he brought them out to within view of Bethany, and then lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Afterwards, they were continually in attendance at the temple, blessing God. Amen. The End of the Gospel According to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth Recording by Mark Penfold